His Excellency, thank you for giving time for this interview. Um, I just like to start with the at East policy. Mm -hmm. Under the Prime Minister Narendra Modi, look East policy turned into at East. Yeah. So, what do you think? Uh, what that, that actually means uh, for the neighbors, like especially like uh, countries like uh, Myanmar? Right. Well, th uh, thank you very much, uh, Somi, for this interview and my greetings, Minglaba, to your viewers. Um, Prime Minister's Act East policy uh, has basically two connotations. One, I think it means that in some ways India has been as lagging behind in implementation. Mm. And what he wants to say is that now we will implement and act faster. Mm. Uh, the second uh, component of the Act East policy is that really in terms of a sense of direction, uh, we are looking much more towards uh, the east of India that starts from all the way from the Bay of Bengal, goes all the way up to uh, the uh, sort of the Pacific, uh, North Pacific, South Pacific. Uh, Prime Minister has been extremely active in, in this kind of diplomacy. As you know, he's attended two ASEAN plus East Asia summits, first in Naypyidaw and then in uh, uh, Kuala Lumpur. But in the meantime, he has also visited Korea, Mongolia, China, Japan. On this side, he's visited the South Pacific and uh, Australia. Uh, Singapore has also been covered, Kuala Lumpur he did together with his visit there. So there's been a lot of diplomatic activity, there's been a lot of institutional activity through the ASEAN and East Asian mechanisms, there's been a lot of high level visits from all these countries to India and from India to, uh, to those countries and so that is setting the political framework for this Act East. There is an economic component as well, I think Prime Minister has a vision of India as a kind of fourth generation Asian manufacturing power. Uh, first we had Japan, second we had the East Asian Tigers, third we had China and he sees India as a fourth generation manufacturing power but manufacturing coupled and therefore multiplied by digital technologies. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are going to, be, hopefully we are going to be a new kind of uh, manufacturing. So manufacturing power. and focus in the countries in the East? No, that is his vision of India, India. Oh, but okay. uh, given the fact that uh, Asia mm -hmm. is the fastest rising uh, region of the world right now mm -hmm. and it is in our immediate neighborhood, we have close cultural links, close economic ties, good political relations. Naturally, one of the areas where this is going to be most concentrated will be uh, uh, East Asia. So, so what that means uh, to Myanmar? Yeah. This is really, really the very important question because uh, Myanmar in many ways is our gateway to Southeast Asia. Uh, the terrestrial gateway, the land gateway is obvious. We have 1,600 kilometers of common frontier. Not an easy frontier because it's mountainous. It's remote from for central Myanmar and it's remote for most, most of India. And this uh, t terrain has not generally through history been actually used for trade. Uh, when they have been when people have crossed the borders, mainly it's been for military campaigns, whether it was the homes in the olden days or, you know, the Americans when they were fighting the Second World War in China or the British or the Japanese for that matter. But I think now the vision is to, to make this into a trade route as well. But it's not limited to the land because uh, if you see across the Bay of Bengal and the Andaman Sea, uh, we also have uh, many other potential takeoff points for Southeast Asia. Um, the way could be one of them. Uh, of course, Yangon, Telava for the interior, this region is there. Uh, but I think the special sort of interest would be to connect India to uh, Southeast Asia, particularly through the CMLB countries uh, by land. Uh, so there, I think uh, Myanmar has a particularly strategic location. Because whether it is by sea or by land, in most ways you have to go through Myanmar. But I don't want to focus this only on the region because Myanmar has an intrinsic importance to us for itself. Uh, we have, I mean, you know, one should not underestimate the value that we attach to our historical and cultural relations. That is there. In the contemporary era, we had our sort of, uh, you know, period under colonialism. We had our struggle under colonialism and we had also 
our relationship uh, through the Asian Relations Conference when you know post-independence Asia tried to find a new identity for itself. Um, uh, so there, there is these factors but um, there is also the potential of Myanmar by itself, mm. its natural resources, its human resources, uh, its cultural discipline, uh, what we think is its easily trainable workforce. So we see that Myanmar and India could actually have a strategic economic partnership mm -hmm. where we help each other in areas that we need. Uh, we need to augment our production. As you know, Make in India mm -hmm. is a big part of that. Yeah. Uh, you need to industrialize, you need to value add, you need more employment generating industries. You need to upgrade your economy from a basically agrarian economy now with a little service component to make use of your human resource potential and your natural resources. Uh, then we have the strategic location of Myanmar. It's located very well between the markets of India, China and ASEAN, mm. uh, which is a huge market. Um, you know, you have a 2 trillion Indian uh, GDP and 1.2 billion market. You have a two point something trillion and 600 plus market of ASEAN and you have the whole of southern China. So one can see the potential of a, uh, of a strategic economic relationship based on uh, lifting the economy of Myanmar. Mm. So, uh, you mentioned about connectivity. Uh, some may say that even though there has been talk about a lot on the issue, uh, the region, especially even country like even India, Myanmar, there is it must not uh, is not yet much connected. Mm. Either talk about cross border land or even the the sea route. There are issues cons mm. and concerns uh, in terms of connectivity. Mm. You've been here for for some years. Uh, so, what are the kind of developments that have taken place? Right. For, for example, for the last uh, for the last three years, mm. in terms of this connectivity being done mm. uh, between, especially between the countries uh, India and Myanmar. Mm. So. As I mentioned, there are some historical reasons and geographical reasons yeah. why connectivity has not been easy, easy to establish. Geographical yeah. reasons I mentioned yeah. that the northeast is a bit cut off from our own, uh, yeah. so to say, rest of India. Uh, connectivity to the northeast, inside the northeast, <coughs> has, can be improved, is being improved. Uh, similarly, in Myanmar as well. And then there are other historical reasons. Myanmar's own isolation uh, has also contributed to that. So. What we are seeing now is really a product of the last 10-15 years mm -hmm. and in fact much more on the last 5-10 years. Uh, if you think about that, we have essentially two major connectivity projects with some minor uh, projects linked to that. One is the Kaladan Multimodal uh, transit, tra Transport Transit uh, Project uh, and the second is the Trilateral Highway. Uh, in the Kaladan, what we are doing is we are trying to link the eastern seaboard of India, particularly the port of Calcutta, upgrading the port of Sitwe so that it supports a, a more vigorous economy uh, and connecting to the uh, food insecure and impoverished regions of Rakhine state as well as Chin state and ultimately to the northeast of India. So that uh, there will be a great, great deal of uh, trade as well as we hope investment along this corridor. But we also hope to link uh, Sitwe port with the hinterland and interior of uh, Myanmar itself so that it will also connect let's say via Minbia and An to Magwe. So you can see that you know this is a kind of beans and pulses and agricultural producing region. Uh, in addition to Yangon it will be able to use Sitwe port mm. for let's say exports to India. The more there is trade and transit the more uh, the economy will be infused and the more attention and attraction it will be for investors. Mm -hmm. So that we hope will also generate economic activity, e sort of sustainable economic activity uh, mm -hmm. in this region. Then we take uh, the trilateral highway. The trilateral highway is, uh, uh, will, you know, we have already connect, constructed, starting from about 2001, the Tamu Kale Kaleva section of the road. Uh, but at that time, it was not, uh, we, we, not, uh, we did, I mean, the government did not decide to uh, upgrade the bridges. Mm -hmm. Now we are going to be upgrading the bridges. The budget has been passed 
We expect that in the tender process will be completed in the next one or two months. And I would say that before Thinjia, we should be ready to move, mm -hmm. unless the rainy season then comes in the way, in which case we'll resume after the rainy season. How long it will take uh, uh, to, to complete the whole... Well, because the working season is a bit uh, short mm -hmm. here, uh, I would say it would take at least two to three years mm -hmm. to complete, because it's 69 bridges yeah. along mm -hmm. that road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then, the new project that we've undertaken, which is a major component, is to upgrade the Kaleva Yaji section of the road. This is a very difficult section of the road, if you know it. It's very unstable soil. This is very mm -hmm. close to the Zagain fault and all that. So uh, we have had to do slightly more rigorous uh, uh, engineering and uh, st studies and you know also due diligence in this respect. But the, re the detailed project reports are ready. They have been approved by the government of Myanmar. On our side, they have got the technical approvals, but we are now trying to process the financial approvals. Assuming that we get the financial approvals in the next two, three months and then the tender process starts, mm -hmm. we'll probably be able to begin this next year. Mm -hmm. And I don't think uh, it would be realistic to expect that this section will be completed before 2018, 2019. So let's say 2018, 2019, the entire connectivity uh, between India and Myanmar through these two projects, plus the Retidim Road, Mm -hmm. uh, which we are also going to upgrade uh, the Retidim Road. So these three will substantially change uh, the connectivity, land connectivity between uh, Northeast India and, in fact, between India and Myanmar, because Sitwe also has a maritime component and an inland water component. So let's say the surface transport between Myanmar and India. Uh, point to note is I don't think there is any other country at this point that is doing two major connectivity infrastructure projects mm. entirely out of its own money. Mm. Uh, it is 100% funded by the government of India. Mm. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't know of any other. Uh, most of the other infrastructure projects are loan driven. Mm. Uh, this is not loan driven. Mm. And the total you know, outlay that we have on the, if we put the cumulative amount, the projected budget for these three, three and a half, four connectivity projects will be close to a billion. I'm mm -hmm. making a ballpark figure, but it's anyway between 800 million and uh, a billion. Uh, so this is a big commitment from India. Mm 